All right, well, we'll probably go ahead and get started and like people can trickle in like as they uh, as they like. Uh, for those of you I haven't met, I'm Brent. I'm one of the, the uh, clinical instructors in Neuro uh, this year. Most of you guys like come through Neuro, so I've seen like many of you. But uh, we'll talk a little bit about some spine imaging today. Uh, this picture, we were talking about it a little before. This was taken in Tennessee. I like grew up in Memphis. This is like so just a real... This just screams Tennessee or apparently Texas because that's what someone was asking about before. Uh, so, so I gave a lecture like earlier this year, and we were making jokes. We called it uh, we called it basic neuroradiology. So we're going to call this basic uh, because those those bros are definitely basic. Um, so we had for basic neuroradiology, we featured some UGG boots on the uh, on the first slide. Uh, for this one, we got these basic guys like with their truck hot tub. Uh, so we'll just talk about some spine, uh, some spine stuff. I think spine like kind of gets a bad rap. It's sort of like the, I don't know, it's it's kind of like the tedious part of radiology. Like a lot of people don't like to do it. Um, it's kind of got a lot of obscure terminology. It like varies from like attending to attending, like who you're with. But uh, I mean, there is like a pretty interesting like variety of disease processes you can get in the spine uh, because the spine is really just an extension of the, the central nervous system. So you can get some, uh, you can get some like pretty interesting disease processes there. And uh, so you get to this where like you sort of have this catch 22 that like kind of the best way to learn about spine is kind of by reading the studies. But, but then it's like hard to read the studies when you have no experience near these terminology, this terminology, you know, uncle vertebral joints and all of this stuff. Um, so it's kind of hard to proceed. So I'm gonna try to like fill in some of those gaps for you guys and sort of clarify some of those things especially, uh, you know, for residents like in their sort of more junior uh, years. And uh, this kind of reminded me of, I, I saw this note. So like at some point, like towards the end of my residency, every time I would see something funny, like in someone's chart or like indication for a study, I just started taking a picture of it. And I have like quite a collection of like ridiculous stuff now. It's, this like is a note, a clinical note that says, obesity is contributing to this woman's hip pain. Ortho won't intervene until she loses weight and she can't lose weight because she has limited mobility. Um, so that's sort of like reading spine or kind of like radiology in general. It's like hard to do without experience. And the best way to do it is to get experience. Uh, so you get in this sort of like fake it till you make it sort of, uh, sort of scenario. This is one of my favorite pictures of all time as well. <laughs> this was like taken down, uh, like kind of in front of Alcatraz. This is a Hyundai with a Mercedes Benz, like, uh, <laughs> sort of hood ornament duct taped to the front. I, I think that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen, actually. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about spine. We'll talk about the anatomy a little bit. We'll talk about some general principles and like terminology of spine imaging. We'll kind of cover degenerative disease a little bit and kind of uh, an approach to non-degenerative disease as well. And then if time sort of proceeds quickly, we'll do some cases at the end. If it doesn't, then we can just skip those, but hopefully we'll get to them. Uh, and we'll kind of emphasize like a sort of basic kind of foundation and terminology like for spine imaging. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a, you know, an image of the lumbar spine. And are, th are there like first year residents here? Like who's a first year resident? All right. So who, who wants to like volunteer to like answer these questions for me? We'll, we'll go through these. We'll start in the front. Okay. I can do it. Oh. No. Don't go ahead. Someone just tell me. T1. T1. All right, and and then why is it a T1? CSF is dark. Yeah, exactly. Like CSF is dark, and then how do you differentiate? Like, how do you tell if the marrow is normal? It's yeah, it's brighter than the disc. It should be at least as bright as the disc, and uh, and that's kind of what you're looking for. So now for like some anatomical structures, like uh, do you know what this sort of structure that has a line on it is? Yeah, exactly. And then uh, it's it's corresponding structure on the other side. Exactly. Posterior longitudinal ligament. And then you have like one uh, other sort of major spinal ligament. Yeah. Flava Flav, as, uh, as Dr. Wilson uh, says. All right. So then what about uh, what about this one? Like, what do we have here? All right. T2. And again, like, you know, because the CSF is bright. And uh, so this particular sequence has like a variation here. Like what's, uh, what's like a little different about, about this one that kind of makes it be useful. 
Exactly. It's like fats added. So you see that there's like, it's kind of funny because it's like much brighter on my screen than it is. I guess it's like better over here on this TV. But uh, the fat is usually like very bright, but this like becomes very good at looking for like soft tissue inflammatory things, uh, facet, you know, inflammatory disease and things like that. You can see it much better on, uh, on a fat saturated image. And uh, so of these discs, uh, which one of them is the abnormal one? Yeah, L5S1 is the abnormal disc. And you can tell that like uh, for the same reason, like on T2 images, like the disc should be sort of fluid bright, probably not quite as bright as CSF, but this one is, first of all, it's not as tall as it should be. And it's also not as bright as it should be. So that's like disc desiccation. And that's kind of the first, uh, so you've lost that water signal in that, uh, in that disc. So that's the abnormal disc. Uh, here's a normal one and here's an abnormal one. There's the conus. The conus should be like at L1, L2 or above, like usually, I mean, there's some variation, but usually like if the conus is below the L1, L2 disc, that's abnormal in an adult. It tends to be like kind of lower in children and kind of gradually uh, rise over time. But by the time you're an adult, like you shouldn't be seeing the conus like in the lumbar spine. If it is, you should be thinking about like a tethered, a tethered cord. All right, so who wants to like go through these anatomical structures? I need like a volunteer. Also first year, these are first year level anatomy questions. Someone in the back. I'll give you the first one. Yeah, I'm a first year. So the first year, is that pointing to the post year one? Yeah, it's either, yeah. So, well, I mean, I put the label up there now, but uh, yeah, so it's either pointing to the disc or the posterior longitudinal ligament, and those abut each other. So, so either way, you're kind of looking at the same structure. And when you have a disc that bulge in, it tends to press that uh, that PLL into the spinal canal. So, what about this other structure now that has this this arrow on it? Yeah. So, so it's kind of there's two sort of adjacent structures like this. This is sort of the neural frame and like sort of out here. But this is actually, there's a little like CSF filled structure there and some like bright little dot in it. Um, yeah, so that's a nerve root. And then like, but you know what this thing is called? So this is called the lateral recess or the subarticular zone. And this is, so the, the neural frame is kind of right there and the nerve root for that level has already exited. Like it exits above, above the disc. But uh, the nerve root for the level below in the lumbar spine is like in this little notch called the lateral recess. And the reason this is important is like it's very common to get a disc there and it can kind of press on that and actually cause symptoms at the level below uh, that disc. So what about this? Uh, so so this, is, uh, this is at the level of the facets, right? So you have a joint here, and then you have two, you have two articular sort of pillars there. Do you know which one of these is from the uh, <laughs> from the level below? Uh, yeah. So this one is from the level below exactly, and then this one is from the level above. So that makes this the. I mean, the naming is like a little confusing. This is the superior articular process of the level below. Then you have the facet is right here, and this is the inferior articular process from above. And you kind of kind of think about that like from uh, from like an LP or something, because the posterior elements kind of point down towards the floor, like they kind of gently slope back. And that's like when why when you're doing an LP like on the floor, you sort of like aim a little bit up towards the person's like head or a little bit up towards their uh, umbilicus to like get between those. So the posterior elements tend to be like a little bit below. Uh, the uh, the anterior components. Uh, what about this? Yeah, it's finest process. And uh, then this right here. So uh, this is a surgical. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is the lamina. And so a common surgical procedure is a laminotomy where they make a hole there to decompress or a laminectomy where you just take out the uh, the whole thing. Uh, so that's the lamina. And then this is kind of, we kind of talked about it already, like this is the neural frame. And so that's at the level of the disc. And if you go a little bit above the level of the disc, uh, so we're a little bit higher. And so here you see like, that's where the nerve root is coming out. 
And here, it's like a little fatter there. Like that's fatter because it's the dorsal ganglion. But that's the nerve root coming out. And this is the this is the vertebral body above. So by the time you get to the disc, usually that that nerve root is out. Uh, here we have just some paraspinal musculature, and they have names, but honestly, it's just not very important. Um, and you can always look it up, uh, look it up if necessary. Here you have just the exiting nerve root on the other side. And uh, so here's like where I was kind of pointing out, just, it's worth noting that the nerve root comes out above the disc. So a lot of times you can have a really bad disc and that nerve root at that level can still be, uh, can still be relatively safe. Now here's a sagittal image, and this is like from primer, um, just the sort of schematic there. And this is kind of out laterally, like at the neural foramen. And you can kind of see those same structures, like you have the disc. So here, you know, you have your disc here, here's your nerve root, and see the nerve root is above that disc. So you have like a fair amount of room for the disc to come out before it really gets, uh, gets that level. Here's the same structures we saw before, the superior articular facet, the inferior from the level above, and you have a pedicle here. So the pedicle's connecting like those posterior elements uh, with, the, with the anterior elements. You kind of catch a little bit of the lamina there uh, on the MR, not on this, on this diagram here. The C-spine, sort of the same thing. You still, you have your ALL, you have your, uh, you have your PLL there, and then you have the ligamental flavum. Now, the only thing that's like a little bit different about the cervical spine is you have these tiny little joints, like along the lateral margin, like just in front of the neural foramen, you have these little uncinate processes that form a <laughs> joint. And this is the uncovertebral joint. So you hear this, I mean, these are the terms, like you start reading out with like someone, we're like going over spines and we're like 10 studies behind. And someone's like, oh, there's uncovertebral hypertrophy. And you're like, uncle what? I, okay. So you write it down phonetically and you expect power scribe to get it and it usually does. Um, so that's sort of back to the Hyundai. You gotta just fake it until you make it, right? Um, yeah, so these are small, like little synovial joints. They don't exist in the thoracic spine. They don't exist in the lumbar spine, but they're little joints and they can get arthritis just like other joints. So they tend to get bigger. And it's easy to imagine like from this picture, like why that's a problem, because this is where the nerve root comes out. And as you get like a little osteophyte there, then you start impinging on that, uh, on that nerve root. So those are the, the uncovertebral joints. So cervical and lumbar are sort of, the anatomy is the same with the exception of those uncovertebral joints. And also that lateral recess that we talked about before, like only exists in the lumbar spine. So only like once you, you're down to the cauda equina, do those nerve roots fan out early uh, in the cervical spine, they tend to like come directly off of the cord and like sort of go directly out, out the neural foramen. So uh, you, you have to worry about that, that less. Uh, the thoracic spine, uh, I mean, it's image less, like there's less degenerative disease there. There's kind of less of everything there. You have 12 vertebral bodies, 12 nerve roots, 12 ribs, and those transverse processes uh, articulate with the ribs. Uh, another thing I'll point out here, which is, of, which is significant, is that the way that the nerve roots are numbered is different because there's eight cervical nerve roots, because one comes out below the occiput. So one comes out <laughs> below the occiput, between the occiput and C1. And that's the C1 nerve root. So they actually end up being numbered one higher. So the nerve root that comes out below C7 is actually the C8 nerve root. Uh, so just be a little careful like about your numbering there. And just be aware that there is a difference. Um, try to have like little interludes for you guys. Uh, this is... Uh, Scully film report, which is uh, was signed off by your uh, your venerable uh, program director. Don't tell her I showed you this; she'll like kill me. But uh, apparently, this patient had bilateral testicular screws. I think that uh, power scribe misunderstood the word pedicular, but uh, that's okay. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> if you if you are going to take pictures of things that are funny. Make sure you position it in such a way that the patient information is not on the picture. I don't want you to get fired from this job because of me. If you include the name of the radiologist though, then that's just funny. Sumi <laughs> is not HIPAA protected, unless she's a patient. <laughs>